Hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill with your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman. It is such a pleasure to share God's word with you. You know, I was so blessed this past Sunday at the New Mountaintop Church, where we celebrated 17 years of ministry as senior pastor of New Mountaintop a total of 27 years of being a senior pastor in the Lord's church. And I was so privileged to meet at least three people who have been watching me on YouTube and they could quote various things that I've said here on the midweek refill. In fact, one couple actually moved from the other side of the country and they are now a part of our local family. And it's just amazing. Shout out to you guys, because I know you're there watching. I know you're there watching. Hey, if this is your first time seeing my face, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. As you can tell, I'm excited about what I do because I love God and I love the people of God. And it is my unique joy, privilege, and honor to share God's word with you through this series of teaching. Well, tonight we're going to be sharing from the topic of trusting God with your feelings, <laughs> with your feelings. Now, one thing that I recognize is that all of us have emotions and feelings, and sometimes they are not always exactly where or what they need to be. So I want you to make sure that you like, share, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, and all that good stuff so that others can experience this particular teaching. Also, don't forget that with every teaching right down there in the description box below is a free PDF handout. You can print it out. It is shareable. You can email it to others. You can jump on a Zoom call and have a family Bible study and actually go back through everything we're going to share with you in this teaching. And besides that, there are personal discovery questions that will help you take a deeper dive into the teaching. It's really good. And I don't say that because I do it myself, <laughs> but I'm saying it because it's really good. And it will help you to apply God's word in a very practical way. Well, we've been on a series for the last, my goodness, I guess, couple of months or so on trusting God in every area of your life. And tonight I want to continue this series. I don't know what next week is going to bring, but I want to continue this series by talking about trusting God with your feelings. Now, emotions and feelings are a gift from God. You heard me right. Emotions and feelings are actually a gift from God. It's God's way of allowing us to feel to be human, to be expressive, and even unique in how we express our particular emotions. The emotions that God has given us actually give depth. They give color to our human experience. Life would be so boring if we were emotionless robots. But because of the varying emotions that we have at play in our lives, it actually makes life more interesting. It makes challenges a little bit more challenging, and it brings to life all of who we are and identifies all that we really truly need to work on. So emotions allow us to connect with other people, with ourselves, and more importantly, emotions actually allow us to be able to connect with God himself. That's right. You may find that surprising to hear, but you can actually connect with God through the emotions that you experience. So let's talk a little bit more about trusting God with your feelings. You know, sometimes even though we can connect with others, with ourselves and with God through our emotions, Sometimes navigating the turbulent waters of our emotions can sometimes feel so overwhelming. I mean, have you ever gone through an experience that caught you by surprise, caught you off guard? You didn't know what to expect. You didn't even know how to react. 
and you found yourself just simply overwhelmed with an overflow of emotions. But listen, when we learn that we have a God that we can trust, even with our emotions and with our feelings, that's when we'll truly discover how to trust God in every area of our lives. By turning to the scriptures, we can learn how to trust God with our feelings. Understanding that God not only created those feelings, but he also can use those feelings, those emotions that we feel for our growth and for his glory. And that's what God wants to do in your life is that he wants to use your feelings, your emotions for your growth, but ultimately for God's glory. So there are some practical things that we need to understand concerning trusting God with our feelings. And I want to give you the first principle from this teaching tonight. You ready? All right, here we go. So number one, we must understand that God created emotions. Let me repeat it again. Let me say that one slow. God created emotions. You see, when we literally turn to the scripture and begin to learn how to trust God with our feelings, with our emotions, and we understand the reality that not only did God create create, create us, but he also created our emotions, it helps us to understand that there is a peace of God on the inside of us, but that the peace, P-E-A-C-E, of God can be inside of us. Let's look at the scripture, Genesis 1 and 27. It says, so God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. We are made in the image and likeness of God. God displayed emotions even in the scriptures. Throughout the Old Testament, we see the wrath of God, the anger of God. In the New Testament, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by his cousin John, we saw God happy. We saw him speak from heaven and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What we should understand is that when you consider the vast array of the human spectrum of emotions, joy, sorrow, anger, peace, the emotion of love, the emotion of jealousy, And on and on, we could go all night with that. Each and every one finds its origin in the heart of God. In Genesis, when God made man, according to the Genesis account, and when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God experienced sorrow, God experienced anger, and it repented the Lord that he made mankind which means that he experienced regret. It certainly doesn't mean that God sinned, but God regretted that he made man because of the fact that they were sinful. Even jealousy, did he not say, I am the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God, I will have no other God before me. And the anger of God, is revealed in scripture. The wrath of God, as I stated earlier, is revealed in scripture. The peace peace of God and the joy of God. So all of the human emotions that we feel, that entire array of human emotions emanates from God himself. And you and I are created in his image. And each one of these emotions that we feel actually stems from God himself. And do you know why that makes me excited? It's simply because it reminds me that God has infused his creation with emotions. 
God installed, God instilled, and God even entrusted human emotions inside of every human being. That's what makes us unique is that we can cry. We can mourn. We can get angry. We can forgive. And all of those facets of emotions that you and I experience every day, God literally put those in us. So just like an artist puts their emotions into their art, God infused his creation, that's you and me, with emotions, reflecting a facet of his own very nature. So that's really reassuring to me to know that even in my failure to manage my emotions at times, I am like God, not that God failed to to manage his emotions. In no way am I insinuating that. I'm simply saying that when we experience various emotions, we get those from God who is our origin or our designer. So here's what I want to suggest to you. Just as you wouldn't deny or suppress other aspects of how God designed you, don't deny or suppress your emotions. They are part of the intricate design that makes you uniquely you. I tell people all the time, it is okay to have emotions. It is okay to emote. That means to express emotions, to cry to laugh. Yes, even you men that are listening or watching, it is okay okay to cry. It is okay to hurt. It is okay to express yourself. It is okay to say, you know, I feel discouraged. I feel disappointed. I feel depressed. I feel rejected. I feel whatever it is. It's okay to express your emotions. Don't try to deny. And that's where a lot of us go wrong, especially in the world of Christianity is that we try to wear these masks and pretend like every day is Halloween. It's hallelujahween, right? So we wear these masks and pretend as if everything is perfect and wonderful. And how are you today? Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm doing well. And just lying, lying to ourselves, lying to other people. But you know what? When you're faking, somebody knows you're faking. So why don't we be real? Take off the mask, be real, and say, I'm hurt, I'm disappointed. And I know that people, many, many people in Christian circles, and I probably will get some even some negative comments for that. That's okay. You just help my YouTube algorithms. So thank you for that. Um, many people in Christian circles say, get out of your feelings. You should not be talking about your emotions. And you know, it's all about the Lord. And it is all about the Lord. But the Lord made all of me. The Lord knows all of me. The Lord is intimately aware of every emotion that I feel. So why should I try to hide it from him? That's crazy. Didn't he say, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavily laden? Matthew 11, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light and all of that. That was him saying, hey, bring it all to me. Talk, talk to me about it. Let's talk it out. Let's work through this. Let me heal you. You can never help what you will not allow to heal. And so don't try to deny or suppress your emotions because they are part of the intricate design that simply makes you, you. All right. So let's review really quickly. Number one, put this in the comments, please. God created emotions, all right? God created emotions. All right, let's go to number two. Number two, God understands our emotion. And don't forget that right there in the description box is a free handout. You can get this entire teaching, even some of the details of what I'm saying right now, along with the personal discovery questions. I want you to make sure you access this. So number two, God understands our emotions. Would you kindly type that in, please? God understands our emotions. If you're taking notes at home, 
while you're waiting to get the handout, write it down. This is something you need to know. God understands our emotions. So listen, when we turn to the scriptures, we can learn to trust God with our feelings. We can understand that he not only created us, but he also created our feelings. And just as he understands us, he understands what troubles us and what triggers us. There is nothing you're ever going to say, feel, do, act out that will make God say, somebody must have switched the, the child when I picked them up from the nursery. No, God understands our emotions. Now, I hear a lot of people <laughs> say that the words God understands are cop out is some type of excuse. I don't think so at all. You know what I think it is? I think it's what the church needs to be saying. I think it's what believers need to hear. I think it's what the world needs to know about our God, that he is not some cosmic bellhop that is way out there in the blue, that is in no way uh, dealing with humanity, that is um, aloof to our concerns, that is, you know, so angry and filled with fury and rage that he's checking the list and checking it twice and going to find out who's naughty and nice. No, I think people need to know that when you're mad, God understands that. When you're disappointed, God understands that. I think that's a revolutionizing message that needs to be shared, that God understands our emotions. So when we understand that God understands our emotions, we'll turn to scripture here, Psalm 56, verse eight. Listen to the psalmist's words. This is so powerful. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book, Psalm 56, eight, how powerful, how incredibly mind blowingly powerful that God is so intimately and intentionally aware of our emotions that the Psalmist sees God like this. You keep track of all of them. You know, every time. I'm broken. You know, every time I'm hurt, I'm disappointed. Fill in your own blank. You have already collected all my tears in your bottle. So the tears I have yet to cry, God has already got a good collection working. You know, it is said, and it's, it's Jewish legend. I can't prove it, but it's Jewish legend that women in particular used to have what was called a tear bottle. And that when they would cry, they would literally have a device that would cause their tear to roll into the bottle that they would label that bottle and say, these are grief tears. Uh, these are joy tears. These are sadness tears. These are sorrow tears. I don't know if that's true, but the psalmist thought of God in the ancient long ago, that he is so intimately and intricately detail oriented about the affairs of our emotions that he keeps track of our sorrows and he collects our tears in a bottle and he records each tear in his book. Wow. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? God understands our emotions. And this passage just clearly illustrates that, that he knows us so well that he knows the difference in the type of tears that we cry. Isn't that powerful? If that's powerful to you, just type powerful in the comments right now. 
we need to understand that, that God understands our tears. You know, I remember when my, my big son, my big son was a little boy going to the park, taking him to the park, whether I was swinging with him or on the merry-go-round with him or pushing him in the swing or now he can push me in the swing, may have to push me in a wheelchair at some point in my life. He's a big old boy now. I love him. But imagine a parent who watches their child from afar off. They're feeling what they feel. They're hurting when they hurt. They're laughing when they laugh. I'll never forget my son when he was small, taking him to the park, watching him play, being concerned about, hold on, hold on to the merry-go-round. It's going to spin faster. Hold on. Don't fall. Stop running. I don't want you to fall. You know, all of those types of things. Making sure he was avoiding uh, running out in front of somebody who's swinging and they're coming back this way so that he doesn't get kicked. All of those things. Being so intimately attentive to every concern. When he giggled, I'm giggling. When he cried, I'll be honest, sometimes I cried too. Even now I'll cry if he's crying, depending on what the situation is. Why I am intimately involved, devoted as a dad. I care about my son and whatever concerns him, I am there to get involved with it. That's how God is with us. He watches us and he gets into it with us. And he's there for us, even when our emotions are out of whack. So our Heavenly Father goes even further than I could for my son. Because according to the scriptures, Psalm 56, he collects our tears and records our sorrows. Isn't that amazing that he knows us that well, that he keeps track of everything that goes on and wrong? In our life, you know, we've all been taught that that God is 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 uh, God is looking and looking all the time. You know, God saw that. Oh, He's writing it down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're going to hell. You're going to bust hell wide open. You know what? For some of us, hell is dealing with some of these folks. Is telling us we're going to hell for everything. Our Heavenly Father is so intimately, patiently kindly, mindfully aware of us that he knows what we're experiencing before we experience it. And he's there to collect every issue and keep track of what's going with going on with us. Does that bless you? Definitely blesses me. So next time you feel overwhelmed by your emotions, remember that God isn't distant God isn't disinterested. He's not off in the great by and by, pie in the sky when we die. He's intimately acquainted with all of your feelings and he cares deeply about what you are experiencing. If you're experiencing it, he cares about you as you go through it and he will carry you through it as you go through it. Here's number three. Jesus exemplified healthy emotional expression. You know, when you look at the scriptures, you can see how Jesus managed emotion. He was angry at times. He turned over tables in the temple because of the motives and the mindsets of offering God less than the people's best. But I love this one verse, shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept at the grave of his good friend, Lazarus, his BFF Lazarus. We find the shortest verse in the Bible, yet it is so profound. Jesus, God in the flesh, the one was there with God before creation that was on the creation committee. When God said, let there be and let us make man, he was talking to Jesus. He was talking to the Holy Spirit. 
And yet he did not suppress his emotions. Instead, he expressed his emotions openly, authentically. And this was not a sign of weakness for him to cry at a funeral. It was actually a sign of genuine love and empathy for Lazarus, Mary and Martha. You know, I think it was a little bit more empathy for Lazarus, though, than it was for Mary and Martha. You, you know, the sisters had kind of an attitude with Jesus because they said, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. You know, I know even now if you say something, he'll get up and all of that. But he had empathy for Lazarus because Lazarus was finally resting from the cares of this life. And he knew he, knew he had to disturb him and wake him up. So I think that maybe that's why Jesus cried. Nonetheless, whatever his reasons were, he showed emotion. He exemplified healthy emotional expression by crying. Well, this wasn't a sign of weakness for Jesus. Again, this was genuine love. It was genuine empathy. And when you and I express emotion, it is genuine love that comes out. It may come out a little harsh, but it's genuine love that comes out. And here's number four, give your emotions to God. You know, we've already discussed the fact that he created our emotions, that he's aware of our emotions, but now what do we do with them when we are experiencing these high emotional experiences? Well, the best thing that you and I can do is to give them to the one who actually created them. Let's look at what the scripture says here. Psalm 62, verse number eight says, trust in him at all times, O people. Watch this. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. That's a great verse to live by. In fact, why don't you commit that to memory this week? Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. But God is a refuge for us. So what that says is that there's not a time that you should bottle up your emotions. No, quite to the contrary. You should pour them out to God because we're instructed, pour out your heart before him. Here's why. God is a refuge, which means that God is literally a place to hide, a place for help. So when we understand that, we can indeed give our emotions to God. One of the things that I've done before that has helped me out a lot, and I'll pass it on to you, is that when I was not able to sleep at night, I would take out a journal, a notebook, and write out my thoughts and write at the top of it, Dear God, and just literally put everything on the paper. I was pouring my heart out before God. But you might say, well, how did that help you? It was so effective because once I closed that notebook and prayed over it in my hands, lifting it up to God, I was able to go to sleep. I literally poured out my heart to God. I want to suggest that you try that and let me know in the comments later on how that can help you after you try it. All right. So if you're going to try it, type in the comments right now. I'm going to try that. All right. So we also learn so much by even thinking about the imagery of a parent-child relationship. A child who's hurt or scared naturally runs to a trusted adult for comfort. And similarly, we can run to our Heavenly Father, sharing our deepest feelings, our fears, and our hopes with Him. You know, every man can relate to this one. When we're scared, when we're hurt as a boy, The first person we call is mama, right? Well, the same is true even in our adulthood as we go through the cares and concerns of life. We can run to our father in the very self-same way, and he looks after us and protects us in our time of fear, our times of despair, and gives us the hope that can only come through him. So, I want to encourage you, don't bottle up your emotions. Instead, pour them out in prayer. Pour them out in praise. 
Let your feelings draw you closer to God. Remember the beginning of this teaching, we were talking about how our feelings and emotions can actually be used to draw us closer to God. Allow them to make you feel closer to God as a father that you can confide in, that you can talk to, that you can share with, that won't judge you, won't criticize you, won't condemn you, but still receives you even with all your flaws and imperfections because he knows every single one of them. Remember, he knows every single hair on your head. So he certainly knows all of the disorders in in our thinking. So when we do this, we literally make God our refuge and our strength. And that's what he wants to be in your life. You should understand something else that's really very important. Our emotions aren't something to be ashamed of or even to suppress. Now, I know that there are times that it's not appropriate to act out in public. So we're not saying that at all. That's not permission to do that. But our emotions are a powerful testament, literally, to the God who created us, the God who understands us, and the God who loves us so deeply. So as we trust God with our feelings, we can navigate life's ups and downs with confidence, knowing that he's right there with us, guiding us and comforting us every single step of the journey. So as you think about your own journey, it may feel as if you are alone going into a dark place, just like the scripture. But here's what I need you to know is that the sun is shining and the S-O-N is awaiting you after every dark moment in your life. So trust God with your feelings. I certainly hope you've gotten a lot out of today's teaching. Uh, Certainly emotions are a gift from God. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that they give us depth. They give us color to the human experience. They connect us with each other, with ourselves, and to God. Hey, this is Bishop Littman. Thank you so much for watching the Midweek Refill. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and click that part of it that says subscribe and all. That way you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. Don't forget to check the link in the description below for your free PDF handout that accompanies this teaching. Hey, love y'all so much. Can't wait to talk to you next week. Until then, you go with God and trust God with your feelings. See you later. Thank you.